is 4 o'clock straight up. We'll go ahead and begin our Planning, Permitting, and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of July 7, 2015 agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda for today? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Carol and seconded that we approve the agenda for today, July 7, 2015. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held on June 2nd, 2015. I have a correction. Okay. It's Thornsbury on um, page four, and it's right before number three. And it says um, it was moved by blah, blah, blah. The second sentence should say in advance, not in advance. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you see it, Lynn? Advance instead of advance. Mm -hmm. So, no, advance. You're saying grammatical? I, I think it's just the wrong word. Yeah. Advance would mean that you're asking for it ahead of time. Right, advance okay. Would be, you're holding it. Right. Just held, so just take that, have that removed. Just yeah. be just held. Okay. The word to I advance. gotcha. Yeah. All right. Okay, is there any other corrections to the minutes? I move that we approve the amended minutes for the meeting on June 2nd. Second. Okay, so we move by Jerry and seconded that we approve the amended minutes of the regular meeting held on June 2nd, 2015. Is there any other further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. Next item on our agenda is to receive and place on file the financial report for May 2015. Staff report. This is Anderson with staff. Um, this goes through May 31st of 2015, which puts us at 83% of the fiscal year for us. Um, as you can see, uh, going down through the items, we're close to 83% in most categories, um, with a couple of exceptions for some revenue. Um, of property sales, but we've made that up in some other areas. So overall, we're right on track for the year. Any questions for staff? Okay. It'll be noted that we will receive and place on file the financial report for May 2015. Okay, the next item on our agenda is oral presentations. This is for anything that is not currently listed on today's agenda. If you have an item that is not currently on today's agenda, we would ask you to just please approach a podium, state your name and address for the record. Seeing if there is none, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to new business. Our first item under new business will be the hearings. The first is a rezone. This is a request by Lost Island Real Estate, LC, to rezone 2.58 acres from CP Planned Commercial District to R4RP planned multiple residence district to allow for residential development of the property instead of commercial development located at the northwest corner of East Shallows Road and Hess Road that begins on page one of your packet. The time now is 4.04 p.m. Um, there is a hearing scheduled for this time and at this time we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, site plan, and aerial photo were mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail on June 24, 2015. And could we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So moved. Second. Okay, so we move by Dustin and seconded that we receive and place this notice on file. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Staff report. This is Andero staff. Uh, this is a request to rezone 2.58 acres of property uh, from CP Plan Commercial District to R4RP Plan Multiple Residence District. Site was re or the area in question was rezoned uh, to CP in August of 2010. Uh, surrounding land uses and their zoning include to the North Bamboo Ridge Campground Zone CP Plan Commercial. South is South Hills Golf Course Zone A1 Agricultural District. East is Lost Island Water Park and Vacant Development Ground Zone CP Plan Commercial District. And west is Single Family Residential Development Zone R2 
119 family residence district. The proposed rezone area consists of approximately 2.58 acres of land located near the northwest corner of East Hollis Road and Hess Road, just south of Highway 20. Uh, the applicant is rezoning portions of their property that was rezoned to CP plan commercial in August of 2010 to R4 RP plan multiple residence districts to develop the site for single family uses. Uh, the applicant is requesting to plot this land into the new lots for single family residential development in a separate request at tonight's meeting. The RP plan family residence district allows for more dense residential development and neighborhood retail uses. And those permitted in the C1 neighborhood commercial district may be specifically and selectively authorized by the city council upon recommendation of the planning commission, except that no commercial uses or activities will be allowed in the R1 RP and R2 RP areas. Uh, staff is recommending that the request to rezone from CP plan and commercial district to R4 RP plan multiple residence district be approved for the following reasons. The proposed rezone area is in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map, which designate this area as low density residential, mixed residential, professional office, and neighborhood commercial, allowing for infill development within the primary growth area. Two, the site in question would appear to provide sufficient space to meet all required regulations, including setbacks, drainage, landscaping, screening, etc. Three, rezoning of the land will provide for additional ground within the city to be, to be developed for future residential uses. And four, the proposed rezone area can be served by the extension of existing utilities within the surrounding area. Okay, questions for staff. This is Thornsbury. I don't see any mention of the request by the traffic engineer for a traffic study to be done. I, I'm not clear as to when that would happen. Uh, I believe we're going to mention that in the plat uh, request. Okay. I didn't see it there but if, if since you brought it up, we can talk about it if you'd okay, like. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get to the plat request in the packet here. Yeah, under the vehicular and pedestrian traffic conditions, under the preliminary, preliminary plat request, uh, the traffic operations department. Uh, would like to see a traffic impact study completed to determine how traffic from the proposed subdivision along with uh, future development elsewhere in the addition will impact the existing transportation network however uh, that was is not a condition of approval of that particular request so uh, in the future um, when the ground begins or is ready to be developed they are wanting a traffic impact study turned in so help me understand these would, could, maybe words. I mean, if, if the traffic engineer thinks that there's a potential problem, then when would the city say, yes, we're going to do it before any development happens? I don't get it. The city of this is Anderson with staff. The city of Waterloo has actually earmarked funds um, through our Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is the federal road dollars received um, in the year 2016 to look at the entire analysis of the Laporte Road and Hess Road um, corridor from Shawless up to Mitchell. Um, so we're anticipating the a fuller analysis of all the traffic movements through that, that entire corridor in the near future. Um, <coughs> estimating the amount of, of build out of this area versus the timing of that, um, we don't think that we need to do a traffic analysis at this point um, since that other one is forthcoming. <coughs> Obviously that's something that the commission can, can weigh in their approval as well. So what is the what would be the ramifications if indeed development happens and then the traffic study shows that there's some mitigation required? What happens? We'll have to look at our options for mitigating whatever needs there are. Um, a lot of times there are traffic <laughs> safety funds. There's other funds that we can go after to make improvements to road. Um, again, looking at that entire corridor, obviously we're we're earmarking funds for the study of that corridor because we're planning to earmark funds for the redevelopment of that corridor in the near future. So if there is, if, you know, all of the, the sites are sold in development and if there's a lot of congestion and it's not safe there, then the city, the taxpayers pay for it and we don't request the developers to do anything? Um, you have to look at 
is there existing conditions out there now that also cause congestion? So a lot of times it gets very difficult to determine exactly who would be responsible for paying for that. Obviously the city has the ability to enter into partnerships with developers. They also have the ability to assess improvements to property owners, which is rarely done because a lot of times it's difficult to pinpoint, you know, is, is there traffic conditions or problems there now because of this development or is it because of the new Shawless Road was opened in the, recently or is it because of additional traffic at Lost Island Water Park? How do you determine exactly who pays for what? So typically the city will look at all those and, and look at ways to fund it again through Iowa Department of Transportation safety funds or congestion funds or there's different sources that we look at to make traffic improvements. Hmm. Thank you. Can I just say, I, I feel very strongly that I think if we start making developers responsible for um, even entertaining the idea that they are going to be responsible for changing roadways or improving roadways, we're going to see a lot of developers that are going to leave Waterloo and go someplace else. You don't see that happening in Des Moines and Cedar Rapids and other cities. And if we want to encourage development, we need to do everything we can to support developers and help them. And I feel when we're talking about road, road uh, service into these developers, developments, that the city is responsible for that, not the developer. I mean, that's my own personal feeling. Any other questions for staff? Thank you. Okay, at this time, for those of you who would like to speak for or against this request, we would ask you to come forward to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. Also, if the commissioners would like to speak, also leave your name and uh, we'll go from there. Um, Mike Dryden, Aimant Design, 625 32nd Avenue, Southwest, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm representing Lost Island. I don't know if there's any questions specifically. And Gary Birch um, with Lost Island is also here. If you have any specific questions, you really don't really have anything to add. I have a question, and this may just be um, just a minor detail. You're looking to get requests to change this into um, from commercial to residential. Correct. Is that specifically tied to the plat that is following yes. that? If that plat, for whatever reason, I, mean, I, I don't know until we get there, is not approved for whatever reason, are you okay with it staying residential? Since once we change it from commercial, it would be right, residential. Would You're okay more with that? Yes. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from the audience wish to speak for or against this request? If not, I'd like to turn back to the commission for a motion to close the hearing. Move. So moved. Second. <laughs> okay, it's been moved by Carol and seconded. We close the hearing at this time. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Okay, the motion passes. This time I just entertain um, either a motion or discussion to move forward on the zoning request. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request to rezone from CP Plan Commercial District to R4 RP Planned Residence District. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mike and seconded that we approve the CP Plan Commercial District to change to R4 RP Plan Multiple Residence. Any discussion? Lynn, I just want to correct you. It was um, moved by Matt, not Mike. Matt. Sorry. I feel, I'm just starting to finish it. Hold on. Why do I call you Mike? I'm sorry, Matt. That's, That's the right. first letter right. Sorry. <laughs> for the record, it was moved by Matt and seconded that we move forward on the on request and approve that from CP to R4RP. Apologize. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Okay, the time now is 4.15. Our next item under new business is a plat. This is a request by Lost Island Real Estate, LC, for the 118 lot preliminary plat of Island West Edition, located at the northwest corner of East Shawless Road and Hess Road. And it's beginning on page 8 of your packet. Just a little note, they might be a little hard to read, so you might have to thumb through a little bit. 
Uh, at this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee, stating I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, site plan, and aerial. Sorry. Just oh, I'm plan. sorry. There's a plan. Just a yeah. plan. I'm sorry. sorry. It's okay. 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 So, do we, do we need it? Nope. Oh, staff okay. report. Okay. Staff report. Okay. Uh, Sandair staff, uh, this is a request a preliminary plat approximately 73 acres into 118 residential lots for the purpose of developing a residential subdivision. A proposed plat is served by Hess Road from the north and south and East Shawless Road from the east and west, both of which are classified as minor, minor arterial roads. Also, multiple new streets are proposed as a part of the new plat as it develops and the proposed streets will be classified as local streets. Traffic Operations Department would like to see a traffic impact study completed uh, to determine how traffic from this proposed subdivision along with future development elsewhere uh, in the addition will impact the existing transportation network in this area. Staff is currently in the process of obtaining necessary right-of-way and easements for the new recreational trail along the north side of East Shawless Road adjacent to the proposed plat. Uh, when the trail is completed, the Shawless Road Recreational Trail will extend from Isle of Capri Boulevard westward to Highway 21, will, will, where it will connect to the existing Shawless Road Rec Trail that extends westward to Highway 63. Future plans call for an extension of the Isle of, uh, from Isle of Capri Boulevard eastward to the Cedar Valley Nature Trail. Angus Dry Drive, which is located within the Guernsey addition to the west, would not be extended and connected into the proposed subdivision. As a property owner completed a program through the Iowa Department of Natural Resources to create a wetland directly next to the end of Angus Drive. Uh, removing that wetland would require that the property owner mitigate the wetland loss and establish a new wetland elsewhere. Uh, submitted preliminary plat does show the locations of proposed water and sanitary sewer. Uh, however, the applicant has since at this time turned in an updated plat that does show storm sewer. Um, Mid-American Energy has also requested that there be 10-foot easements on the frontages of all lots within the subdivision. Preliminary plat consists of about 73 acres of land and is proposed to be subdivided into 118 residential lots. At this time, uh, the applicant has not submitted a final plat, which is anticipated to be done in phases. The engineering firm representing the applicant has noted that the final plat will consist of approximately 25 lots. Therefore, this would be below the maximum amount of number of 30 lots before a second access to the subdivision is needed as required by the Air National Fire Code. Uh, the land to be platted is currently zoned R1, one and two family residence district, and R4RP, plan multiple residence district, and CP plan commercial district. At the extreme southeast portion of the plat, the applicant has requested to rezone that from CP to R4RP. The R1, one and two family residence district allows for one and two family dwellings, while the R4RP allows for multiple family uses. Also, the RP planned residence district allows for more dense residential development and neighborhood retail uses, and those permitted in the C1 neighborhood commercial district may be specifically and selectively authorized by the city council upon recommendation of the planning commission. The RP planned residence district is a site plan specific district. At this time, no site plan has been approved for the site, so a site plan amendment will be required in the future. Um, as noted, we have received an updated plat, but I will go over the things that we were needing prior to this meeting, which we needed to show sidewalk connections being shown to the planned East Shawless Road Recreational Trail. Building lines needed to be labeled on the fronts of the lots. Mid-American Energy had requested 10-foot utility easements along the frontages of all the lots in the subdivision. Uh, the city is a currently acquiring right-of-way and easements for the Shawless Road Recreational Trail Extension Project and areas to, to be acquired by the city need to be shown within the plat. Uh, proposed street lights need to be shown on the preliminary plat as well as a complete stormwater plan must be shown. Proposed street names in this subdivision have been reviewed by the engineering department for any conflicts with other street names in the surrounding area, and there are no conflicts. All other requirements for the preliminary plat process appear to be met on the submitted plat. It is staff's recommendation that the request for preliminary plat of Island West Edition uh, be approved due to the following reasons. The plat can be serviced by the extension of existing utilities in the area. 
The plant will create an infill development site within the primary growth area, as well as additional housing development options within the city. <coughs> and the plant is in conformance with the future land use map for this area, and with the condition that the final doc the submitted documents are updated as corrected by uh, and corrected as indicated by staff, in which we have received an updated plat from the applicant. So. Okay, questions for staff? Mrs. Thornsbury, I have a few questions. The, in the tech notes, when this was discussed, there were 10 different items that were identified as missing mm -hmm. or needing updates. Have all of those been satisfied? Yes. In, uh, yes, okay. Prior, and, just to, prior to the tech meeting, though, we did receive another updated plat, so that's why the list was smaller in the packet of information you have here, so. Okay, and then the last thing about the boulevard entrance, the 28 feet versus the 31 feet? Uh, that's probably a question that the applicant would have to address as far as it, well, the street was sufficient for what the type of subdivision is they need. Okay. Thank you. This is Whitehead. I have a question on the, the zoning of the western, I'm going to call it the western third or western fourth, where it's R1. What, uh, I guess, which zoning is going to I guess govern that area the most restrictive because yes. you have 10 lots that are split yeah the zoning ordinance this is anderson with staff the zoning ordinance will note that any time that there's a conflict between different portions of the zoning ordinance the more restrictive will apply okay. any other questions for staff okay if there's anyone in the audience who'd like to speak for or against this request, we'd ask you please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Also, the commission members should speak uh, into the microphone and state their name before um, speaking into the mic. Again, Mike Dryden, Amen Design, 625 32nd Avenue, Southwest, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. To, to specifically answer your question, um, at this time, I believe all the streets will be 28 feet except for the boulevard. The boulevard will obviously be wider than that, but there are no through streets. There's no through traffic um, through the subdivision. Um, so 28 feet will be sufficient um, for the traffic that we expect. So I don't know if there's any other questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak for or against this request? If not, um, I do have one more yes. question. This is Thornsbury. When they talk about um, developing under 30 so they don't need a second um, egress on that, um, do we have to consider where that second access would be as it's being built out, or will it, or will it always come back to the commission? The, the next. So this is the preliminary plat to kind of lay out how it's all intended to be laid out. Right. And then they'll final plat 25 lots. So the next final plat would come back for, let's say, another 25 lots that would show that second access point. So okay. it would come back to the commission in terms of the final plat. But you are approving it in this preliminary layout as to how they intend to develop it. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I would entertain a motion to either approve or deny the request. <coughs> Pardon me. Mrs. Thornsbury, I move that we approve the request for the preliminary plat of Island West Edition and to be approved with the, um, with the following condition that the submitted documents are updated and corrected as indicated by city staff. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Chair and seconded that we approve the request by Lost Island Real Estate for the 118 lot preliminary plat of Island West Edition um, with the conditions so outlined in the request. Okay, is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. 
Okay, the time now is 425. The next item under new business is special permits. The first one is a request by CSRS Properties, LLC, for a special permit to allow for the expansion of a non-limited alcohol sales use located at 2000 Hawthorne Avenue, and that begins on page 17. Staff report. This is Western with staff. Uh, the applicants are asking for a special permit to convert a existing outdoor smokers, smokers garden into an outdoor beer garden in the rear of the property. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood and surrounding land uses. Um, allowing the special permit for an outdoor beer garden would not appear to have a negative impact on vehicular or pedestrian traffic's, traffic conditions. Uh, the property in question is zone C2 commercial district and has been sent, been zoned since the uh, the adoption of the ordinance in 1969. Uh, the surrounding land is zoned as follows. Uh, to the north is C2 commercial district. To the east is M1 light industrial across highway 218. To the south, R2 one and two family residence district and C2 commercial district. Uh, to the west, C2 commercial district. Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the future land use map designates this site for commercial use. Uh, the request would be in conformance with such designation. Uh, the applicant was granted a one-year special permit to establish a new non-limited alcohol sales on-premise on premise consumption on March 12, 2013 under the condition that a six-foot solid fence along the south property line to act as a buffer for the adjacent residential properties. Uh, the property is now being brought before the commission again to request a special permit to convert an existing 450 square foot concrete patio area into a beer garden. Conditions that were set at the 2013 meeting have been met by the applicant. In 2013, a one-year conditional special permit was granted to allow the applicants to allow further observation of the site. Throughout the year, no complaints have been brought before the planning staff regarding the site and staff have not seen any evidence of the site having a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood. Staff would like to note though that the City of Waterloo Police Department reported eight calls to the establishment since June of 2013 regarding two fights, three disorderly conducts, and three for loud music. Police Department staff did note that the number of service calls for such a property um, as with this within the time frame is not out of the ordinary and did not express any concern regarding the request of a special permit. However, staff uh, most recently ran a police report beginning January 2014 to today, and it appears that the bar has had some issues with control in the parking lot, which prompted concern from with safety director Dan Trauka, who was not originally in support of the request. <coughs> Excuse me. Staff conveyed those concerns with the applicant and asked that the applicant and asked <coughs> the, the applicant asked to pull the request from the agenda to give them, them time to speak with the Director Trelka about his concerns. Director Trelka stated that he had a very good conversation with the applicant and the applicant assured him that there would be an employee present in the outside patio area, as well as adding an additional video camera in the area uh, that has the ability to record the happenings. Therefore, staff is recommending the request for a permanent special permit for the establishment outdoor beer garden at 2000 Hawthorne Avenue be approved for the following reasons. Conditions, conditions that were set by the Board of Adjustment on March 12, 2013 were met by the applicant. The site is located in a commercial corridor adjacent to a highway. City staff have not received complaints about the establishment. Waterloo Police have received eight service calls in June 2013 and noted that receiving that many service calls for properties such as this is not out of the ordinary. Police did not express any concern regarding the establishment receiving uh, a uh, permanent special permit. And uh, the establishment, the owners of the establishment have uh, uh, agreed to have a staff person present in the beer garden and an additional video camera to be installed within the beer garden area. Any questions for staff? Thank you. Okay, if anyone would like to speak for or against this request, we would ask you to come forward to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record and the commission members as well. State your name. My name is uh, Randy Soper, 1309 East Shawless Road, Waterloo, Iowa. I'm the president of CSRS uh, Properties and uh, run Saks Neighborhood Pub. 
Uh, just to let you know, the conditions that I talked to Director Trauco about have already been met. We've already got the cameras installed, all the proper insurance, everything else we've done. And as in the past, when we were here asking for permits and things before, we've always followed through with what we said we would do. And I've always tried to uh, respect whatever the city and the police department would like of us. That's it. I'd just like to say this is Tackett. I'd like to say that I did stop by there shortly after it was built. I used to live near that neighborhood, and first of all, I was very impressed. I talked to one of the ladies that worked there. I know she's one of the managers, but how they said it's become kind of a neighborhood place, and it seemed very clean. Um, so I was impressed just by walking in. I, I personally I don't frequent bars. <laughs> um, I, you know, we serve food bars, too. But if you're going to serve alcohol, I figure you need to be responsible. I mean, that's it, people are responsible for their own actions, but owners are responsible to make sure that there is something, a plan in place. And I was impressed with how clean the facility was when you came in. I mean, it didn't look like a seedy little dive in the corner. They really cleaned that building up. I thought they did a nice job. So. Um, I did stop by because I wanted to see what we were proving if things have been met. So I know by going over personally, I was impressed. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. I'd like to add actually that you know, in the past, we've seen applicants come that have been to the commission prior and they've been conditioned and they haven't always been met. And so I appreciate, I'm sure the rest of the commission appreciates that uh, you guys are handling your business. Uh, we try. And, and following up and, and uh, sticking to the agreement. So thank you. Any comments or questions for the applicant? Thank you. Okay, anyone else would like to come to the microphone and speak for or against this request? Again, please state your name and address for the record. Okay, if not, I will turn this back over to the commission for either final thoughts or a motion. This is Morrison. I have one question. I noticed that this request is going to be for a permanent permit versus the usual one year ones that I think we normally see. So I know if there is an issue in the future, can that permanent permit be modified? Um, this is Anderson with staff. Yes, it can. Um, Eric Schrader is actually the expert on that part of the ordinance, but there's, there's an annual review process that we can go through, um, especially if there's any problems um, there's a process in the in the liquor ordinance portion of the zoning ordinance that allows us to go in there and ask for records, ask for um, a meetings with with the owners if there's problem problem property. So there's definitely conditions and or safeguards in place. We'll call them. Even with the word permanent, there's the potential for review if concerns arose down the road. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? I would make a motion to approve uh, the request for the special permit, a permanent special permit, um, with the conditions uh, as noted. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Cavis and seconded that we approve the request for a special permit to establish um, an outside beer garden, which would include the expansion of the non limited alcohol sales use. Okay, any final discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, time now is 434. Next, under special permits, we have a request by Justin Smith for a special permit to allow for the establishment of a dog kennel on the property located at 800 Jefferson Street that begins on page 25. Staff report. This is Miller of a staff. The applicant is requesting to establish a dog day here for the purposes of boarding dogs during the day. The request will not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The surrounding uses are primarily businesses um, and the run area would, for the dogs would be located in the rear of the property in question. The property is zoned C3 commercial district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Uh, the applicant has submitted a site plan indicating that the outdoor run will be in the rear of the building and the applicant has stated that a proposed fence will be the that the proposed fence will be at least six feet in height the initial hours of the business will be 7 a.m to 6 p.m monday through friday the business will be used as a dog daycare where owners will be able to take their dogs during the day to socialize with other dogs 
The applicant has indicated that the dogs and owners will go through an application process, will, which includes verification of shots for the dogs and meeting and a meeting process with other dogs. The applicant has stated the, that according to state regulations, they have enough space for 75 dogs, but they only plan to ha have two groups of 15 at most for the total for a total of 30 dogs. Uh, a local vet will be on call and sanitizing indoors and outdoors will be done daily. Um, therefore, staff recommends that the approval for the request of a special permit to allow for the establishment of a dog daycare for the following reasons. The request would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian or vehicular traffic conditions in the area. Um, subject to the following condition that the site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., included but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, etc. Questions for staff? I do have one question. Um, I'm looking, I believe it's on page 33, where it's showing the pictures. Was, I think, isn't this, is this the one that's got the blue and white current? This would be like a Correct. dance? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That. Um, I'm guessing they are going to be putting fencing in when they're, how high will that fence be? We'll make sure that the dogs don't, because that is downtown. Yeah. Um, making sure the dogs don't get out and they don't get hurt or. The applicant stated something. that it would be at least six foot solid fence. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions for staff? I'm oh, sorry, you said, you said it would be a solid fence? Mm -hmm. Okay. If anyone has um, any thoughts for or against this request, we ask you to come forward to the podium. You state your name and address for the record. If not, I would bring it back to the commission for final thoughts or a motion. Just a really quick question. Uh, is this at all related to um, the establishment that was on Hawthorne and, mm -mm. and Mitchell? This is not. Mm -mm. This is White, and I have a question on the site plan condition and why that's required. I guess that's the question. So I was just reading through some of the report. You know, screening's not required, et cetera. Drainage is already in place. It's not new. Yeah, but the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, we normally like to put it in all special permits uh, at the advice of legal just to make sure since it's a separate board other than the city council uh, approving it at the end of board of adjustment to make sure that they are aware that they still have to follow all other city codes and ordinances. So if they're under the landscape points, they might have to put in shrubs? Correct. Got it. Any other questions, thoughts, discussion? No. Oh. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the request um, by Justin Smith for a special permit to allow for the establishment of a dog kennel on the property located at 800 Jefferson Street. Second. Okay, so we move by Carolyn seconded that we approve the special permit to allow for the establishment of the dog kennel on the property located at 800 Jefferson Street. Any condi discussion? What? You want to add the conditions noted by staff? Yes, please. Okay. Were the conditions added by staff that the final site plan will meet all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including but not limited to the parking, landscaping, and drainage? Any final discussion? Good idea. <laughs> okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Okay, the time is now 4.39. There's a request by Vince, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Vince Kobliska, for a special permit to legalize the conversion of an existing dwelling into a five-unit dwelling in an R3 multiple resident district located at 326 Fowler Street. That begins on page 35 of your packet. Staff report. This is Miller's staff. The property does not have sufficient parking to accommodate for the five plex. 
The applicant has submitted an application to purchase the property to the south, which is owned by the City of Waterloo, that contains a total of 3,650 square feet in order to bring the property into compliance with parking regulations within the zoning ordinance. The applicant has noted that he would like to hard surface the area if he were to obtain the additional parcel. All surrounding streets are classified as local streets. Sidewalks are located along north and east property lines of the property. The property in question is zoned R3, multiple residence district, and as are all surrounding properties. Um, the, there would not be any screening requirements for this development if the, a parking lot is constric constructed on um, the lot to the south. The screening, would, screening of the parking lot would be required. Um, the lot is currently zoned R3, multiple residence district, which has requirements of 10,000 square feet and 80 and an 80-foot lot width for five units. This lot would also need um, 2,500 square feet lot area per family, or in this case, a total of 12,500 square feet to meet density requirements. The applicant will be asking for a variance to the minimum lot width, minimum lot area per family, and minimum lot area requirements, even if the city-owned lot um, were included with this request. Parking requ requirements for a five-plex would be two stalls per unit, or in this case, 10 stalls. Any residential property that has three or more units is also required to have hard surfacing, hard surface parking for the tenants. The applicant has submitted that application to purchase the property to the south um, and stated that he will be hard surfacing that property if he does obtain that from the city. Um, according to the city rental inspector, Barry Stratton, the home has three doors for access. The basement is one unit and it's complete with a kitchen and sleeping room. There are four units upstairs, one which has a kitchen and the rest do contain hot plates. The basement unit shares a bathroom with two other units and the two remaining units also share a bathroom. Um, the building inspections department has expressed that if the home were to be approved for five units, the applicant would need to bring the home up to code. The home would have to have sprinklers installed, firewalls between each unit, along with numerous electrical, plumbing, and utility updates to bring it to building code requirements. Staff does not support the approval of the conversion of the home into five units. However, staff is recommending the home be approved for a duplex. The, it would appear that the home would not meet um, minimum lot size area, minimum lot width, or minimum lot area per family for a duplex, but the home is converted in such a way that a duplex would be more cohesive with the neighborhood in comparison to five units. Um, therefore, staff is recommending denial of the request to legalize a, the five unit conversion, but would recommend approval of the request for a special permit to allow for the establishment of a duplex for the following reasons. Um, the request would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on surrounding area, and the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the pedestrian or vehicular use conditions in the area if it were to be a duplex. And with the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, etc. Any questions for staff? This is Thorns Ferry. Um, the does if it, if we approve the duplex would that also be would it be required to have that adjacent lot it still would not meet current density requirements if it were that duplex um, they would not necessarily need to acquire that if they don't want to it's kind of up to them i guess at that point um, but they were going to acquire it for parking purposes um, if they do not meet current parking per regulations for a duplex then they might want to look into obtaining it still. I guess that's kind of up to the applicant at this point. Except that if we agree to the special permit, is that with parking, with the parking variance then? As of now, no. Okay, so we couldn't really agree to a duplex because it wouldn't be in our code, in alignment with our code, because it doesn't have the minimum um, areas. They would still have to ask for a special permit for that, though. So they would still need to ask for the variance to the all of the minimums because they still would not meet those, even for a duplex. I have a question for staff. 
how would they propose to divide the home as a duplex? Upper, lower, or all one level with a... That might be something you want to ask the applicant. I believe there's a kitchen up <coughs> higher and then another kitchen lower, but you might want to verify that with the applicant. So this is Thornsbury again. And so the issue on the table is the, the question about the five mm -hmm. units. And the, the duplex is just an aside that staff is offering. But we really should not be dealing with the duplex issue because there's all kinds of other stipulations that have to be met for the duplex special permit. Is that, am I understanding that right? Just to go to board adjustment for the variances for that. Yeah, the, the Planning Commission, we threw that in there based on previous uh, actions taken by the Planning Commission as to what we thought might be a, a reasonable compromise. Obviously, the Planning Commission, you have the full ability to take into whichever information you want and disregard whatever you want. So I have a, another question. In the notes, I don't know what page number it is, if it's the page that has 2B, 2F, 2G on it when it talks about, um, I, don't, I don't know where these things came from, the paragraph items, but the, this is, property has been a five unit property since 1990 and the city has inspected it since 1990 and now we are asking them to bring it up to code because they need this special permit i don't i don't know i don't know who inspected it in 1990. that'd be a question for the applicant the property was periodically inspected through the years. I would assume that would be the city inspectors. And the city treated it as a rooming house. And the owner has re made all the required maintenance and improvements over the years. These are statements from the applicant. You can ask them. These are statements from the applicant. Yes, That's they are. the source. Thank yes. you very much. I, I didn't say that. Yeah, I, I have the same concerns as I, I was trying to figure out originally, because looking at the year and, and I went to the library we're looking at some old homes because my daughter had bought one that was like turn of the century and it it just seems like just how some of these are being converted I'm just wondering what happened how did things get snuck through um, it seemed if I maybe somewhere I read this because I was reading it on the online version I thought I understood somewhere that it had been a repossession it was purchased and then Somehow, during the dormant period, there were revisions made to it to make into a five unit. I was a little confused when I was reading online going through the packet. Um, so everything that we're being told, these are applicant statements, we don't have anything like an abstract or yeah, any kind of record? Because okay. I was just wondering how that, how that happened. Just this is Gustafson. One question that I had. Um, in regard to the original um, a, uh, um, application for variances, I didn't hear anything about the units in the basement that we were requiring an egress. And don't um, any bedrooms in a basement have to have an egress? This is Anderson with staff. I'm not the building official. Um, okay. But I'm but pretty I, sure that they do. I believe you're correct. I think that would fall under the bring it up to code paragraph. Yeah, on page but I didn't see it listed specifically, so I was like, you know, okay, you know, even if if we could see our way clear of everything else, just the whole idea about people being in a basement and not having a way to get out if the main entrance is blocked would be. I, I think they were probably just making a statement here on things that they knew right up front that it would need they may not have been aware of whether or not it had ingress egress windows would be my guess if this were converted into a, into a duplex they wouldn't need a uh, the sprinkler system is that correct that i'm not a, i'm not sure okay. any other questions for staff Okay, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against this request, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Gary Pop, and I'm, uh, I'm an attorney in Parkersburg, Iowa. <coughs> Address there is 234 3rd Street. Uh, I do live in Blackhawk County, 8110 Buck Ridge Road, Cedar Falls. Uh, I represent Vince Kabliska. He's the, uh, the owner of this property. Uh, I've represented Vince for over 30 years, and uh, he's been a landlord in uh, Waterloo here for over 30 years. He got started back in the 1980s. Uh, you know, he had some medical problems, and he got started in the painting business, and uh, he also he found himself a niche where he ramps efficiency apartments and sleeping rooms. And uh, he got started that back in the 80s. And, uh, that was kind of kind of the, been the area he's been with for the last 30 years. Uh, back in the late 80s, he was looking for some additional units. And uh, this property at 326 Fowler had been uh, repossessed by Statesman Bank for Savings. Uh, Statesman's Bank was kind of one of those, it was an institution created by the government for the savings and loan, uh, uh, well, I guess you would say problems that we had in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, <clears throat> Vince was uh, basically, he was interested in this unit because it was at that point, it had, was five units. It would, but it was vacant because the property had been repossessed and, and wasn't being used. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Vince inspected the property. He was orally told that it, that it was approved for five units and it had been used that way and their evidence was there. Uh, he started, he rented the, bought the property, I think January 2nd in 1990 and has owned it ever since. Uh, he, uh, part of like I says, his business is sleeping rooms. He's, <clears throat> he'll, he'll take people who are temporary workers in the area. He's got uh, people who are more permanent in the area uh, the deal, he did convert it at one point. Uh, he had uh, converted the first floor to, and he had made himself seven units. Out. He had two additional sleeping rooms. Uh, <clears throat> he's, uh, in it, basically, nothing, never had really any problems with the city or thing. The, it, it was periodically inspected by, I believe the fire department does those inspections. And uh, they always treated it as uh, as a rooming house. They told him that well, it passes, you know, and considered it to be a rooming house. And everything, uh, I guess, was came to a head was last year where there's uh, a complaint was about filed that there was too many units in the property. Uh, at that point, I did try to you know to research as to how long this property had been, you know, been as five you know at least five units, and. Uh, you know, basically we just can't can't prove it. We know it was five units for several years before uh, Mr. Kabliska bought it because that's how it was. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's kind of, that's the history of it. Uh, you know, as far as uh, what he wants to do he's asking for, he wants, he has converted it back to uh, the five, uh, five rooms, uh, five units. And in the basement there's a, uh, there's a could be a there's an apartment down there and to the question of whether there are egress windows yes there is an egress window in that basement uh and you know there is a so he's got a full apartment down there with a bath on the uh, second floor which would be the main floor he's got two two room units and then uh up on the uh, upper floor there is a he's got another Two room unit and one large room, and there's also a bath on the on the second floor. Uh, <clears throat> so that's how the the, the property is set up. Uh, <clears throat> he's converted it back to to the way when he originally bought it, uh, and that's you know like this the we're asking for the special use permit to get basically that's what Mr. Kabuska has has used that property for for all these years. Um, you know, as far as the, uh, uh, we were made aware of the fact that there's an issue regarding that they need additional parking. The city does own a, a tour house down behind there, and there, there's, uh, you know, adjoining, I think, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the map there, but that is about 3,500 square feet. And, uh, uh, you know, his proposal is to see if he, if this is approved, he will try and buy that property from the city 
and to put in the wrecks that hard surface uh, parking in that area. Uh, and that uh, will take care, you know, I think take care of the parking issue and he'd be an off, off street. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, you know the, the issue of duplex, I guess it would be, you know, Mr. Kabliska really is, you know, isn't in, you know, his niche or way he rents properties is he rents to uh, people who, uh, you know, some are temporary workers, sometimes students, sometimes uh, he's taken, <clears throat> I says through his years, I think I wrote down, he's told me that he's taken uh, people from community, you know, recommended by him by community services, Family management, Butler Grundy mental health, operation threshold, veterans groups looking for reasonable parking uh, apartments, uh, and, uh, and I think through the years that I've asked him, he's never uh, you know, he's had some complaints for, uh, with tenants. He's always taken taken care of his uh, uh, any complaints. I don't uh, I think this is really the first uh, problem that he's had is, is that this property. Uh, was not uh, at least a record converted uh, to multifamily whenever it was and we like I said our problem here is we just can't prove when it was done and if it was done long enough ago it would have been grandfathered in but we couldn't, couldn't show how long that was uh, <clears throat> as far as the use of it uh, what he'd like to do now is have two uh, uh, any uh, I think the R3 permits a rooming house like like it's been used through the years. Uh, he wants to have uh, two uh, you know, apartments and then the other ones, three things to be sleeping rooms, you know, with maybe a microwave in them and such, you know. Uh, <clears throat> you know, as far as uh, the codes and regulations, it's just, you know, his, he rents these properties, he pays all utilities. So he's, if you look to the improvements he's made through the years, He's put in new windows, you know, eight, nine years ago. He's put a new roof. He's insulated these properties. And uh, the way he, he manages all of his properties is he visits them almost daily. You know, he's got around, a you know, he may skip a day or so, whatever. So that's, you know, he's followed through and, uh, you know, these properties are, you know, well managed. Uh, he serves kind of a, a niche market and, uh, you know, to justify what he's got in it, that we uh, propose that if uh, you know if the special permit was approved, letting him convert, you know have five units, what it was originally, that he would uh, he would buy that at the, the uh, uh, you know the, you know at least attempt to buy that from the city. Uh, like I said, convert it to leave it at five units, and um, you know as far as you know the area, the square footage. That would give him my calculations uh, a little over 9,000 square feet if he buys that that unit. In addition, you know, uh, this is a corner lot, the city, and you know he doesn't actually own to the uh, to the uh, to the curb. Uh, you know, from the sidewalk to the curb is actually owned by the city. But uh, when I say 9,000 plus square feet, he does, that's not including from the sidewalk to the curb. He maintains that, and I says I think if you added that square footage in there, he would be over 10,000. You know, as far as a green area where people use, it would be over I think around 10,600 square feet. You know, again though he would only own the nine because the city would own still owns from the basically from the sidewalk to the curb. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> as far as you know, you know his. You know his target tenants here generally are not not uh, uh, families. You know, with young children, he's looking at uh, he rents to adults. Uh, this has uh, uh, he, you know he's through the years. This has been a neighborhood that he's had some some difficulties in, and he's uh, he's you know worked best he can, and uh, he's maintained his properties. And we're uh, basically he's asking that he be allowed to do what uh, he. Uh, you know, when he originally bought this property uh, 25 years ago, and we felt that if we get the special use to be approved, then uh, you know we could see see if he complies with everything, and if you want, if you want, I guess it can be reviewed if he, you know, if he fails to meet that. But I have every expectation he will. He's 
been like since a landlord for over 30 years. I know that there was uh, the uh, there's one adjoining uh, property that abuts up this. I believe there's uh, that uh, the owner of that property has uh, uh, I think submitted a letter. We haven't seen the letter, but she has told us verbally that she's approved. You know, she would urge you to uh, allow Mr. Kabliska to uh, you know have a special use permit for five units. So, are there any questions that things that I haven't covered or? I, I do, and this is tactic. I, I guess I have many concerns, and maybe you can help me to understand right now. When I'm looking at the property, you're saying you have that property, that lot behind it, city owned. Um, I'm trying to picture five to seven units, and I'm guessing that's five to seven individuals all living in a building that right now is would not even make code for a duplex. I have many concerns. One is if there's five to seven people, where have they been parking all this time? Um, have they been parking well, on the street? Have they been parking in the city parking lot that they shouldn't have? I mean, there, there's so many concerns I have when I read about hot plates. Um, I guess maybe I'm not clear like on, on rooming, you know, I know years ago room and board uh, just from you know, seeing shows and talking with people I've been to those. It just seems like what we have here, and that's where I maybe can get some help and understanding. It seems if we're renting, I guess, is it month to month? Is there a lease? I, I would hope that that person came there. If we're sharing bathrooms, if we only have a hot plate to eat, I just feel like just having a sleeping room, I'm having trouble picturing that. Do they just come in at midnight, lay their head down, get up? I mean, I just feel like you should have a place to get cleaned up, have a hot meal. I mean, even your most basic hotel has a place to go to the bathroom and go to sleep. I mean, it's even if it's yeah. one room. I'm not really seeing that here. It seems like this is an old house that I don't know even how many original bedrooms it had. I'm just seeing there, I'm just having trouble picturing how some minimal standards for staying over are being met. Am I, I don't know if I'm the only I think, one. I, I just have so many concerns. Can I answer that? I'm not sure if I'm well, understanding. First of all, you know, I guess I bring it up that he owns the property since 1990. Uh, you know, if there, I understand the parking concerns. Not all these people, you know, have had vehicles. He's got parking there. But I guess my point with that is that, you know, it's been all these, these years that he's never had a problem. No one's ever filed a complaint with with the city, you know, uh, 24 years, and it was before that. Uh, so, I, and I guess if he, you know, we're asking that this be approved if he, you know, on condition that he buy, he obtains this additional lot from the city and installs that parking. I mean, that's one thing that that uh, we're asking. So I don't, uh, the parking, at least as far as complaints and such, has not been a problem through the years. Second, we're going to address that. We're asking, you know, by on the purchase of the additional lot, you know, property that's owned by the city, and that, you know, like I said, that is 3,500 square feet, and you know, it fits in, you know, as part of this original property. And I don't know how, you know, it ever got divided off and a, a house built on that. Uh, but I said that's, you know, I think. You know, I guess even you know, since it's a, a recognized lot, someone could build on a 3,500 square foot lot. But uh, uh, you know, I think it's best used for green space and additional parking for his tenants. You know, as far as why I say that Mr. Kabliska has a, a niche market here. These are uh, when he's got a sleeping room. There is a bathroom that is you know that's locked in this property and is shared by you know two sleeping rooms so they do have access to a bathroom it's not theirs you know individual one you know when i said he goes to these properties almost daily i mean he makes his rounds you know he checks these things you know that keeps his properties lined and you know i said he does represent uh, does i mean he, he does cater somewhat to uh you know people who are you know lower income who are looking for or are temporary workers in the area who maybe want just uh, you know uh, well not everyone wants a, uh, a two-bedroom apartment for baths and a garage you know it's, that's if they're just going to be here for a few months he's got a, a, one tenant there that he that's just still there uh, has been there for over 
uh, I think two and a half years that, that lives there. And so that's, uh, you know, so he does have some long-term tenants. He does have some people who are in sleeping rooms who basically that's what they want. Uh, uh, you know, I just, the answer to your question is, I, I think he's got to be up to code. He's, you know, it's passed inspections probably half a dozen times through the years. No one, you know, if they ever asked him to do something, he's done it. And, uh, you know, it just seems like. Sir, if I can, I, I just have a question mainly for staff on this. Where, and this is Whited, where a sleeping room, as you've termed it, or a, a rooming house fits in our ordinance. You know, we have a, a C3, or excuse me, an R3 zone um, that, you know, is being used as a sleeping room or a, a rooming house. I, I, I guess I'm curious as to where that fits, and I know you and I, you know, looking at definitions, you know, how that falls into place for the current use. Because that's, that's maybe the bigger overlying, and then obviously the code issues. If we're going to have a duplex or fiveplex, there's obviously huge code issues that need to be addressed. This is Anderson with staff, and, and the person referenced that took the complaint in the in the staff report is Barry Stratton. He's now the, uh, the the person that's inspecting them for the new rental code provisions for the city of Waterloo. Uh, Mr. Stratton's aware of the definitions in the zoning ordinance. I'm assuming since he deferred it to us, it did not meet the definitions of a rooming house. We'll definitely be looking at that a little bit more to see if that applies. Um, but the the fact that they're going through this process, I'm assuming that they didn't meet the definitions of a rooming house. This is more than mm -hmm. Mr. Pappenheim. I do want to acknowledge we did get the letter from Sue, and all of us have copies of the support letter. So we do have it. Okay. We have not seen the letter. She just orally told us to get it. Uh, I do say, you know, in the code, there is a, a definition of a rooming house, and it says a rooming house is a building where a room or rooms are provided for compensation to three or more persons. I mean, that's basically what it says. I think you go dig deeper in there that. Uh, uh, you know there has to be uh, bathroom facilities and I, I think that that basically that's what and I says reason I bring that up is because that's when the, the property was inspected through the years that's what the inspectors went through it so, so you know they mentioned to him you know they approve it as a rooming house and that's Mr. Kabliska thought he was you know he was fine for all these years and there's never been a problem until you know it's complaining and then being I guess we can't prove when this property was converted. If it was converted back in 1970, I guess we'd be grandfathered in, but we can't go back that far. And I says, uh, I just point to the fact that there's, really there's been an absence of problems here. Mr. Kubliska maintains these properties, and it, uh, well, you know, he pays the utilities. He will, uh, you know, if uh, this request is conditioned upon him getting the uh, proper. Uh, uh, you know, buying that lot from City of Waterloo and and getting the parking in there, and uh, you know, the property is going to have to be. Even if you approve the, the special permit, he's still going to have to bring it up to code. I mean, he's going to have to work that out. And I'm not sure I can uh, address each, you know, all the ins and outs of what's got. But I mean, I would say, you know, even if you approve our special permit and we get it and we get our parking, we still have to. Uh, meet uh, the city code, you know, what the thing, and I guess uh, I'm confident that he'll be able to do that. He's, you know, basically since 1992, mid-2014, he's been inspected and, and every, you know, they have asked him to do things through the years and he's done them. You know, they can, um, so. Sir, I have a question. How is this divided for postal delivery? Because what? I know, how is this divided for postal delivery? Because I know when you're uh, delivering mail, are the tenants, have they been required to have a P.O. box or is it divided by letters, by numbers? Because I know that, um, I used to work with the post office, that's why I wonder, and that to be an established individual residence, there has to be some type of um, numbering or letter system and then it has to go through the post office. Because I'm thinking if we're just roaming here, I guess I have a lot of concerns and questions. When I've had people that have had to work place, uh, my ex, for example, went um, was with when, uh, when they were doing some trimming down in Oklahoma. He was a tree trimmer. When a company puts people up temporarily, that's usually paid for either in a stipend or there's money that's already mm -hmm. taken care of. 
and or they put them in a hotel or something and then you said you had someone there for two years so I, I'm just hearing a lot of conflicting so I'm trying to get an idea of what exactly this is and, um, and the five units and I personally be honest I'm really having a difficult time seeing a five unit work because I'm thinking if you're going to have people stay there if they're sleeping, is it here a day gone tomorrow? Do we have any background information? Do they have a postal address? Um, we've had no parking lot, and, and you still allow them. They don't have vehicles, but if you want to have a five unit, then you're going to need a parking lot. So I'm just hearing a lot of conflicting information in my mind that I'm trying to picture this as being a legitimate five unit. Residents. That's where I'm coming from. I'm really struggling to. This is Gustafson. Lynn, can I just say, um, I, I think personally, I don't think that we can do anything with this. Um, we have to deal with what we have in front of us, not what's happened in the past, but we have the city inspector who is saying this does not meet current code, doesn't meet um, what is necessary to have a residence like this. Um, and so since they're asking for a special permit, but they don't meet the necessary requirements for that, then I don't think it matters, you know, under what pretenses or, you know, how the mail is delivered. I mean, I understand what your questions are, but um, I just think we could be here all night discussing this and we're, and we're never going to get beyond the point that we really don't have a stand a leg to stand on in regards to supporting this special permit. So, um, you know, I don't want to cut him off or anything, but I just think you know we need to call the question. That sounds good. But as far as we can't meet code unless we get a special permit, it's kind of like the chicken before the egg. Which comes first? Does he get the special permit and then shows the city inspectors that he can he complies with everything? I mean. If he goes to city inspectors and gets everything up to code, he says, well, you still don't have the square footage. You don't, you know, we can't, can't approve you. So it's kind of a, you know, a catch-22 for him. And, and I think the, the best, you know, predictor of the future is what's happened in the past. And uh, so that's where we're coming here. We thought the first step would be to see if we can get the special permit to, to uh, and then see if we can get, get the approval from to purchase an additional property and, and sir, then we got a mistake and, and again not to cut you off and this is and i'm glad you did call the question um for the sake of the time and to so we can move forward and finish this if, this, if we need to have any further discussion um and i do apologize for not following our own rule we do have rule that we do allow so when one person speak for it and and you have answered a question but i know one of the concerns we've had in the past is is keeping our time down and so I do appreciate calling the question. I think if I'm comfortable speaking for commission, I think we've heard quite a bit that will give us at least enough to go on to move forward. So if that is okay with you, we do not have a hearing, so we do not need to close. Does anyone else have a final question for the applicant before we turn it back for a motion? This is Buckles. I have a question, I guess. That terminology of rooming house, which this seems to apply to was that eliminated by that new law that new ordinances uh is there is rooming houses still included in the ordinances on uh rentals and stuff like that this is anderson with staff i don't know if rooming house or boarding house or anything like that is specifically still defined separately as just multifamily. i think they tried to combine a lot of those into just multifamily residential um Again, I, I don't recall offhand if, if it's still separated out as a separate use. We'll, we'll definitely check into, obviously, if there's any grandfathering in there. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm, I'm assuming that the staff has looked into this, and since it did not meet that requirement, is why it's before the commission. Okay. okay. Um, this is Thornsbury. Is Ms. Charles here? No? The letter of support I was referring to. It, it would appear that Michelle's is not. Uh, she's the, maybe an adjacent property owner, but it's not owner occupied. From from what it appears in this letter. Mm -hmm. That was my mm -hmm. question because I got that in the same impression. Mm -hmm. So okay. what that's. Well, that assumption would be correct. 
Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is Thorns Bear. I just, I'm having a, a real concern here that we really don't know what the code says about rooming houses. I get what they have here about temporary workers and all. It's, it happens so much in mm -hmm. Europe, and, and I mean, it's just what happens in older houses. Now we have a code, we can look it up, that's good. Because I, I would hate to make a decision based on our information because Mr. Schrader isn't here and he knows that code backwards and forwards. And I don't believe a rooming house is a multi-family home. No, that's totally different because we're not talking about families, they're not no, related right, individuals. Right. So. No. I grew up and they still had rooming houses when I grew up. Yeah. Right. There is a market for that, there. sure, but they weren't considered family, multi-family units. No, they multi-individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were transient for the most mm -hmm. part. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is Anderson with staff. So a rooming house is specifically defined in there as a building where room or rooms are provided for compensation to three or more persons. Which definition, but where does it fall under? Which district is it in? The R3 multiple residence district lists as a principal permitted use boarding and lodging houses, rooming houses, and bed and breakfasts. So they're legal as a boarding house. I just threw a wrinkle and everything. Mm -hmm. I understand what the attorney was stating in the fact that they need the special permit in order to start being in compliance but I guess I would rather that they bring it back after they've sat down with the city inspector and have a specific list of the things that need to be done so that we can therefore if we decide to give a special permit we have some a check and balance statement that we can go by these are the things that must be done in order to be in compliance with the code and you know if that is is taken care of then you know we can move forward but i just at this point i just don't think we have enough information um to be able to to act you know in any kind of an educated way at least i'm just speaking for myself well, Mrs. Swordsbury, in the report on page two of three, it tells, it lists out significant um, updates that the um, applicant would need to do. No, I understand, but, but I think it needs to be even more specific than what is there. This is Anderson with staff, and yeah, I would note, even as a permitted use in the R3 district, uh, based on the information in the staff report, it would not meet the minimum lot area for what would be considered an other permitted use other than a one or two family dwelling. Um, however, that could change the specifics of the action needed if they would want to move ahead with legalizing this. So our best bet may be to table it at this time so that we can make sure we analyze properly the steps needed. So I entertain a motion. This is Buckles. I entertain a motion to table this matter until we can get better clarification. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Steve and seconded. We table this issue until further clarification can be provided. Is there any final discussion? Okay, I'm going to ask for roll call vote on just for the record. Whitehead? Aye. Tackett? Yes. Thornsbury? Yes. Gustafson? Yes. Hall? Yes. Meehee? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Buckles? Yes. Motion carries. So we will table this, and then if you would like to meet with the um, building inspector planning, um, they can help you move forward and see what the next steps are, and then down the road you can meet with them about coming back. Okay. okay. You're welcome. Okay, the time now is 520. Our next item on the business is an encroaching agreement. This request is by Jessica Wood. And again, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. I apologize. Jessica, is it Webecki? We bet. We bet. Okay. For an encroachment agreement to allow for a fence to encroach 15 feet into the city-owned right-of-way located at 1625 Wakanda Drive 
That begins on page 44. Staff report. This is Graham with planning staff. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval of an encroachment agreement. Uh, this would allow for the construction of a new privacy fence, which would extend into the city owned right away uh, by up to 15 feet. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood, as there are several other properties in this area that do have fences that encroach past the property line and into the city owned right of way. Uh, the surrounding land use is mainly residential. You do have a park located adjacent to the south. As far as vehicular and pedestrian traffic conditions, uh, the request would not appear to have any Im negative impacts on. Uh, those conditions as the fence would not appear to impede any sight lines for vehicles or pedestrians and there are no sidewalks located adjacent to this property um, there is uh, sanitary sewer and storm sewer located within wakana drive and there is an overhead utility line that is located within this area um, the applicant would like to construct a new privacy fence in the rear yard the property is a double frontage lot uh, the house does face and is addressed off of Wakanda Drive and West Donald Streets located on the south side. Uh, there is approximately 38 feet from the rear property line to West Donald Street and the applicant would like the ability to construct the new fence up to 15 feet past the property line uh, and into the city on right of way. If approved then that would leave approximately 23 feet from the fence to the north edge of West Donald Street. Uh, there is also a small shed that was constructed when the house was constructed which is located just behind the existing detached garage on the property uh, it would appear that a majority of that shed does lie within the right-of-way as well however it would not go past where the fence is being proposed uh, the encroachment agreement if approved would also legalize that existing shed uh, the zoning ordinance does not allow structures to be built within the city owned right-of-way unless the encroachment agreement is approved by city council and that agreement would allow for the property owner con to construct a structure within the right-of-way but also releases any liability from the city and other utility companies if it gets damaged uh, as i indicated there are a number of other properties located in this area who also have fences constructed past the property line uh, it would appear that many if not most of those have been constructed without approval of an encroachment agreement uh, because of the large amount of distance between the property line and the street uh, many property owners may not know that that area is actually city-owned right-of-way and not their own property. Uh, the city would like to uh, look into the possibility of vacating some of this area of right-of-way along West Donald Street if it is deemed of no need to the city and if there are no concerns from any other utility companies. Uh, this would legalize many of those existing fences while also putting additional land on the tax rolls. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending that this request for an encroachment agreement to construct the new fence up to 15 feet within the right of way uh, and to legalize that existing shed be approved as the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the traffic or pedestrian conditions in the area and the area would not appear to be needed for any present or future right of way needs and subject to the condition that there be a signed and executed encroachment agreement. Hey, questions for staff? So I have a question. How does this happen that the city would like to look into the possibility we, do we direct you to do that or is that on have you created an action item for yourselves how does that work so that this gets fixed for the future after looking at the request it was staff's determination to, to talk to other city departments utility companies that's what we mean when we said we would look into the possibility uh, seeing if engineering has any concerns about vacating this right away see if there's any <laughs> utility companies that may have uh, any issues with vacating that so that's what staff was meaning when we said we would look into that possibility um, someone from mid-american was at our technical review committee meeting and it was in the tech notes um, he didn't have any concerns with uh, vacating uh, the right of way but re but uh, keeping an easement over it so he said it's pretty common uh, for the utility companies to maintain easements uh, and vacating it so that that's what we were referring so to. it's an action that you've done we, we, yeah, we've preliminary, preliminarily looked into it with uh, at starting at our technical review committee meeting uh, and then next would be an action item to come before the P&Z Commission to formally vacate it and then it would go to City Council. Okay. Any questions for staff? Okay, if anybody would like to speak for or against this, um, everybody good out there? <laughs> Okay, then I would bring back the commission for final thoughts or vote or motion. Sorry. I would, I would, uh, I would move uh, to approve the request for the encroachment agreement to construct the new 15-foot fence 
uh, within the right of way and legalize the existing shed um, for the reasons of state. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Davis and second that we approve the request of the encroachment agreement for the new fence up to 15 feet, which would legalize existing shed. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Thanks okay. for sticking around. Yes, thank you for your patience. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, our final item under new business is a vacate. This is a request by the City of Waterloo to vacate a 50 foot by 170 foot total of 8,500 8, square feet area of San Martin Drive, the right of way located adjacent to 2825 Crossroads Boulevard that begins on page 54. Staff report. This is Andera Staff. Uh, this particular vacate request is located at the intersection of East San Martin Drive and Penny Street. Uh, both East San Martin Drive is classified as a minor arterial and Penny Street is a local street. Uh, the applicant is requesting to vacate 0 0.195 acres of city right of way at the, use, at the intersection uh, adjacent to 2825 Crossroads Boulevard, uh, which is the Pizza Hut restaurant there at the corner. Uh, there appears to be no need for the excess right of way and vacating the right of way. Uh, would make the right-of-way line along East San Martin Drive consistent with no jogs in it. A uh, right-of-way to the northeast of the area in question has been vacated in the past in 2005 when that area was initially vacated. A 50-foot wide easement was retained over that entire area. In June of 2011, the southeasterly 25 feet of that easement was vacated where 2833 through 2845 Crossroads Boulevard is located. Uh, at the technical review committee, uh, the applicant, or excuse me, Mid American Energy did know that there are some utilities in the area. However, they do not know the exact location in, in, in of those utilities, but did request that a 25 foot easement be uh, retained over their, the northwest westerly 25 feet of the area to be vacated. It is staff's recommendation that the request to vacate approximately 0 0.195 acres of East Sam Martin Drive right away be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have negative impact upon the surrounding area. Uh, the request would not appear to have negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions within the surrounding area and with the condition that a utility easement is retained over, under, and upon the northwesterly 25 feet of the area to be vacated. Any questions for staff? This is Morrison. So after the vacate happens, does the maintenance of that piece of ground fall to Pizza Hut? Who's going to keep mowing it? Pizza Hut should be, they are required by city ordinance that they obtain, or they maintain a budding right away next to their property, so. So actually, after it's vacated, it would be our responsibility yeah. to mow. Oh, right. Because it would be right, it would just be property. It would not long, no longer be right away. So is somebody purchasing this property? That is the intent. Yes. Pizza. And a budding property owner. <laughs> hey, any questions for staff? I would ask for an audience for him, unless Joel, you have something you'd like to put in. I think we will turn this back to the commission for um, final thoughts or a motion. Move for approval subject to the uh, one staff condition for utility easement on the northwesterly 25 feet. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Dustin a second that we approve the vacate the 0 0.195 acres of East San Martin Drive right away and also with the following condition that the utility easement is retained um, under a pond over the north, northwesterly 25 foot of the area. Okay, final discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. Okay, any discussion items today? Ms. Anderson and staff, just a quick note. Uh, last month, the Planning Commission asked us to look into the uh, the hobby farms, we are working extensively on gathering information on hobby farms and other communities, different setups. Um, there's even one in the county zoning ordinance that has different layouts for different sizes of property. So we'll be bringing back those to you for, for uh, review in the near future. Thank you.
Thank you. Any other final discussion items? I move that the meeting be adjourned. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Steve and seconded that we adjourn this meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We are adjourned.